Welcome to this gallery talk. I am Ruth Barnes, the Thomas Jaffe Curator for the Indo-Pacific Department of the Yale University Art Gallery, and I want to introduce you to our magnificent collection of Indonesian textiles. Indonesia is part of Southeast Asia, a region that has been on the crossroads of contacts between India and China for at least 2,000 years. The sumptuous textile from Sumatra that I'm showing you here makes this point well. It is made of silk, a fiber that came from China, and its designs show a strong Indian influence, yet it is made in a resist patterning technique called ikat that is completely indigenous. Southeast Asia has an exceptionally rich textile history, and weaving has developed into a high art form in the region. Textiles are usually made by women, and they are associated with the female aspects of society. They therefore often become metaphors for fertility and play a central role in ceremonial rituals. They are often required as part of an elaborate gift exchange at weddings, and they become an essential part of funerals. One may even say that in many Southeast Asian societies, a person can neither marry nor die without textiles. Woven textiles were introduced in the region by the first Austronesian people who came originally from Taiwan around 3500 BC, more than 5000 years ago. The weaver artists developed complex techniques and designs. Many of them use one of three resist dyeing methods. The first one means tying a pattern into the warp or weft threads prior to weaving. That is called ikat. The second involves painting or block printing a pattern onto the woven cloth using a resist paste and that is called batik. And for the third technique, a pattern is tied or stitched onto woven cloth, then pulled tightly prior to dyeing, and that is referred to as plungi or tritic. Ikat is the most important resist method used throughout maritime and mainland Southeast Asia. Most of the textiles shown in the Indo-Pacific Gallery use this technique. It derives from the Meili root word for tie, as the design is tied into the warp or weft before the threads are dyed. After dyeing, all resist ties have to be removed and the pattern yarns are then woven into the cloth. This second important resist technique is batik, where the pattern is drawn with liquid wax. Batik became familiar in Europe and North America in the early 20th century and was much admired. It was highly developed in Java at an early date and inscriptions from the 11th or 12th century may already refer to it. Plangi and Tritik both refer to a tie dye resist where the design is tied or sewn into the fabric. In Japan, this technique is known as Shibori and it has enjoyed a recent renaissance in contemporary fashion. But it is really the Ika technique that developed to an unrivaled level of aesthetic and technical accomplishment in Southeast Asia. And I'm showing you three especially fine examples from our collection. The first one is a woman's ceremonial skirt called a tapis from Lampung in South Sumatra. It's of 16th of 17th century date with finely tied cotton warp ikat and silk embroidery. The second textile is a woman's skirt from Minahasa in northern Sulawesi of 16th century date. Again, it is cotton and patterned with warp ikat. This is one of the earliest textiles in our collection, firmly dated to the 16th century by radiocarbon analysis. The third cloth is a man's uh, hip wrapper or shoulder cloth called a hingi from Kapunduk village in Sumba in eastern Indonesia. It's of late 19th century date. Again, it is cotton and patterned with warp ikat. Ikat textiles historically played an important role in Asian trade. Silk patola ikat cloths from India were crucial in establishing the rights of Indian and later European merchants to participate in the spice trade with the Malaccas in eastern Indonesia. The patola were much appreciated in the islands of Southeast Asia 
and their designs influenced indigenous patterns, especially in ceremonial cloths that were, and still are, an essential part of gift exchanges at weddings and funerals. Our Indonesian textiles are outstanding for their artistic quality. They also demonstrate that cloth and weaving can have a deep cultural meaning. And finally, they are evidence for international contacts that go back hundreds of years.